morning, everybody. We're going to start Ojai City Council and Arts Commission joint meeting, 6 p.m., November 10, 2015. Uh, could I get roll call for City Council members? Council Member Wyrick? Here. Council Member Clapp? Present. Council Member Haney? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Blatt? Here. Mayor Lara? Here. And could I have roll call for the Arts Commission? Commissioner Golden? Here. Commissioner Stobo? Here. Commissioner Conrad? Commissioner Harmon, Commissioner Balderman, Commissioner Lewis, here. and Chair Addison. Here. And could our Chair Addison lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, due to time limit for the workshop, public comment will be heard at the regular city council meeting starting at 7 p.m. And I will turn it over to Chair Addison to lead us uh, through the workshop sessions. Thank you. Uh, we've had a busy time, as you'll uh, learn as we talk about various aspects. Let me apologize first for the commission members who are not here, unfortunately. In two cases, it's for medical reasons. In the other, Linda Harmon is back east, bringing her 97-year-old mother back to the fold here in Ojai. Uh, but they send their best regards, all of them. Uh, we've had a busy time. Uh, a lot of important work going on, I think, that is reflective both of the creative energies in Ojai, the economic circumstances that have generated a lot of activity that leads to public art, and the fact that our programs, uh, with the exception of two, are well established and running well. And we'll come to that as we move through the program. So we're going to start first with a report from Commissioner Golden, who is the very active and, uh, I have to say, incredibly conscientious chair of the Public Art Com Committee, which has taken an enormous amount of time on the part of her and the other members of that committee, but the results I think you're going to see and hear are really quite special and in many ways uniquely Ojai as well. So Christine, please. And thank you, Michael, for that. I appreciate that. Well, I'm going to, um, uh, or I should say, please bear with me. I'm going to read from the, um, what we hope will be the new spiel on the website about public art because it really does tell, tell the tale of what's been going on. So it, it reads like this, public art matters. It creates gathering places that foster social interaction, lifts the human spirit, and engender positive community feeling. For example, turning the fountains back on, particularly the fountain, the Matilla Hapapi fountain, I see children out there splashing in the water. The whole feel of the arcade plaza has returned to what it should be for Ojai, and of course, Club Vista is the other one. So, and we've given Bill and Cynthia Wyrick a shout out on that before, but we'll do it again. So in 2003, you, City Council, passed a public art ordinance as part of your municipal code. New development covered by the ordinance must set aside 2% of the value of the project up to 1 million and 1% 1 of the value in excess of 1 million for public art. And so now Ojai is on the cusp of having numerous art installations for not just citizens but visitors to enjoy. Rotary Park features Ted Gall's Freedom Chase, a sculpture of a horse towering over the stone wall surround, welcoming everyone to downtown Ojai. Club Vista Park's Overlook Circle Fountain is graced at both ends by stoneworker Paul Linhard's Guardian Spirits, and wound around its pergolas are Corona de Robles, sculpted copper oak leaves and branches by Jan Sanchez. Over at the Bryan Street Industrial Park, we have the Business of Bees by artist Chris Provenzano that graces the courtyard at 407C and 407D. And downtown's Arcade Plaza houses, of course, the Matilla Hapapi Fountain by Sandra K. Johnson, Elliot the Bear, a sculpture by Mark Benhart, and artist Sylvia Raz's early bird shopper. Now, most recently, just this last year, and it was a real test and a real 
um, trotting out of the new art ordinance that was passed in 2014, a revision to the original one, the Ojai Valley Inn and Spa chose local public artist Pamela Grau to complete two large pieces, including a triptych that welcomes guests to its main lobby. Local artist Richard Kite and Mary Kennedy of RTK Tiles have designed a beautiful, uh, just a really gorgeous tile fountain that will be the front entrance to the new Topa Topa Mountain Winery on Ojai Valley. All of these projects, by the way, went through the committee to approve public art. Most recently, public artist Doug Lochner was selected in a limited competition for playful public art elements that are going to be installed over at Libby Park Playground, and I'm going to give you some updates about that in a minute. And those are just some very, very few examples of Ojai's public art. Public art. So for you to know that um, the Committee to Approve Public Art, which is called CAPA, is appointed by the Arts Commission and pro it provides oversight for the public art program. The five member, member CAPA reviews all aspects of public art being proposed. Um, we consider quality, media, style, design, environment, placemaking, permanence, diversity. And then CAPA recommends to the Arts Commission to approve whatever the proposal is that it has deemed is worthy of that particular site. So you should all know in the public that meetings of CAPA are open to the public and its current members. I am the chair as chair of the Public Art Committee, Roger Conrad, who couldn't be here tonight, uh, Mark Lewis, Mimi Moore, who is a citizen at large with extensive public art background, and Mac Lajowski from the Planning Commission all serve on CAPA. So that's just a little overview of public art, and I thought that would be really appropriate for the public to hear what it is that the Arts Commission concerns itself with in terms of public art. Now I'm going to give you an update on the Doug Lochner pieces that are going into Libby Bowl. Um, I don't know if you remember, we did a presentation at a city council meeting and there's a lizard that's 20 feet long. It weighs four tons. It will eventually be made out of concrete. It is yet to be poured, I understand. And uh, D Doug right now, is that's where his focus is. He's working on finishing up the lizard and its companion, a ladybug. Um, they hope or he hopes that this weekend will be the poor date and then it has to cure for a full week's. And Public Works, Greg Grant has been just really wonderful working with Doug, is looking for an install date of all the public art pieces. They would like to try to do it on one day because if they can do it on one day, they're gonna to have to shut the park down. They already know because they've talked to the post office has to be closed off for a few hours. They're bringing in crane and they will crane it in up over the trees and set it down. The uh, Public Works is gonna prepare the ground and have everything in place, but they have to rope off because we can't have public there. So public, you're not invited to that. It would be too dangerous. But they are going to crane this thing in and they are going to plunk it down. Now, I talked to Greg today and he is open to any city council member um, or staff member who would like to go up to his um, workshop place up in Oak, uh, Oak View. He lives up there on Sulphur Mountain Road. Now, I mean on um, Saddle Mountain. And uh, you can see and visit uh, what's going on in the fabrication of the lizard right now is very interesting to look at because if you go now, you will see the skeleton and the elaborate structure that has gone into creating this piece. So he recommended come see it this week. And if anyone wants to go see it, city has contact information for Doug, call him ahead of time, and maybe you, we can do a little field trip so we don't bother him over and over and over again. If any, was, any one of you would like to go, um, you could work through through me on that, and, and we'll see if we can arrange a time. Um, the arch. There's an arch that separates the tot lot from the main lot. We're waiting for a, um, a stainless steel ball, which is a sphere, and it has to come in back to us from China. Uh, the reason it went out to China is because of cost. It would have cost many thousands of dollars more to do it in the United States, and Doug assured me that he checked out all different ways to do it. For it not to have a seam, the technology just wasn't here for that in a way that, that it could be afforded with the budget he had. So that's also looking for sometime mid-December. We're hoping it will be installed sometime in December. 
You never know with projects like this, but that's what we're hoping for. Um, so the powder coating of the other features, the um, blocks that look like ABC blocks, the arch, the roof arch, which is a triangular shape, all those things are being worked on. Then, of course, is the art wall, and he'll probably start working um, on the art wall this week. So it's moving along. It will happen. Uh, we hope to have a ribbon cutting when it's all installed and uh, would, of course, want city council members to be there for that. So that's just a little report on... Um, if I, may interject, if I may interject one thing, the thing that I think that is most powerful about this particular piece of public art is that originally in the layout for the park that was worked out by the citizen committee and the corporation that was hired to bring in the expertise, it was a totally different concept. It had, you know, some suggestion of separation and there were going to be tiles maybe with kids' drawings on them. But Doug looked at that and it was his creative imagination that leapt from that really sort of mundane creation of a separation to something that is so whimsical and that captures the spirit of the fact that it's a children's playground. And I think that is exactly what is at the heart of public art, is that it brings something into the public purview that is unexpected and remarkable and wonderful. And I think this is a perfect example of public art as it should be in Ojai. Yeah, thank, well said. And let me add that we had a table on Ojai Day that we all took turns manning, and I brought my daughter's uh, piggy bank from 1970. That gives you a, some indication of how old she is and how old I am. But anyway, I brought the piggy bank. You were bank. only 12 when she was born, weren't you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I brought the piggy bank, and I haven't counted it exactly yet, but I think we raised about $150, which is 15,000 pennies. Now, why did we do that? Because the scale of the lizard, of this 20-foot lizard, is going to eventually be completely covered in pennies not just from what we collected at Ojai Day, but we're hoping to have the schools do some um, letter writing and drives so that we can get some coinage from around the world. So that's also an exciting part of this project. So. Okay, well, and I think it's going to continue too because of the nature of the economy and that's what drives it, obviously. May, may I talk about another one that please. I forgot to add yeah, and I should please, add in? Please. We also, Kappa also met and has worked and approved a project through the Arts Commission for a Wild Tennis Academy. And this project is using a public artist that lives here in Ojai on the East End. His name is um, Jeff Sanders. And if you look up in any art book, you'll see that Jeff Sanders is considered one of the prominent public artists in all of Southern California. And Jeff Sanders worked with Mark, and they came up with a, a, just the most clever and wonderful, inspirational public art piece. There's going to be a courtyard re redo with um, all the pathways re-poured. Um, uh, and into different areas as you walk along will be what looks like fortune cookies with inspirational sayings embedded in, in the um, outline of the fortune cookie, which is so perfect because that's what Mark does when he teaches over there. He's always telling the kids, failure is just an opportunity for success. <laughs> so now this will be, as they walk along, they're going to see that <laughs> written there uh, in the... Um, and also, uh, we should also mention that Pamela Grau, who is also an Ojai artist, was selected by the Ojai Valley Inn and Spa, and there is a triptych there mm -hmm. of her work as well as a singular piece outside the new restaurant. So this has all happened in the last few months. And Kappa and the Public Art Committee as a result have been very, very busy, very as, you busy. Can, as you can well imagine. Well, it's uh, to some degree the Christine Golden Show tonight because uh, <laughs> Roger Conrad, who is the chair of the Art Grants Committee, uh, can't be with us. Um, and, and let me preface what Christine reports by saying again thank you to the City Council because we I think sort of pushed the margin with our last budget request and you were very generous and gave us as I recall twenty thousand dollars this year for art grants well as some indication of the nature of Ojai we had what I think a total of forty three thousand dollars in requests above and beyond 
I'm going what to we give can the possibly do. Good. So <laughs> this program, too, is one that, because of your strong support, we are able to reach out to artists in the committee. And I think, if nothing else, you'll be astonished by the diversity of the proposals. We'll be making decisions this coming Thursday night, as a matter of fact, after essentially two months of review with each of us being given a packet that we're specifically responsible for. So, Christine. Okay, um, good job. <laughs> uh, yes, and Roger just wanted me to stress that, uh, again, the thank you to City Council for increasing that budget. Last year it was 15200 and this year you gave us $20,000. And Roger wants you to know that we had 13 grant applica applications that totaled $46,950 of requested funds. So the increase is going to really help us try to figure out how to allocate what is less than half of what was um, hopefully requested by our grant applicants. But we'll do it. We've always done it in the past. And then next year, when it's budget time, we'll come back and ask you for even more. You know we'll come back, of course. Of course. But they are really exciting. Uh, we have everything from uh, requests for funding from, for a dance program for Nordoff High School, um, a KMS radio podcast project called The Townies, um, young filmmakers competition has requested money this year um, uh, spring musical summer opera opera camp theater education for grades four to six at Miners Oak rocking at Oak uh, rocking at old school in Ohio's community children's choir and once again it's the grants from the Arts Commission that allow the city to support and fill a gap in the schools where art and drama and theater are sorely lacking, in, in my opinion. And also with our seniors, a lot of these grants really do keep our seniors active involved in Ojai and in the arts. So uh, it's a wonderful program, and, and uh, we all thank you for your support. Any questions, I'm happy to yeah, answer. The, the stretch, that. I think, is really important because it serves everything from grade school kids to the seniors. And also, many of the grants, if not all, but certainly many of them, involve many people. They're not just an artist saying, I want this for my work. It's the Ojai Youth Opera, for example, uh, which I think will be in its third year and which has grown progressively each year, bringing in major professional singers from Europe and New York to serve as the teachers, and then engaging a range of kids. And similarly, rocking at old school at the Gables and expand, they're expanding that program so that they can send out vans and pick up people of that particular age cohort and bring them to the choral work. And in that sense, it's, uh, it's an outreach with art that I think is quite singular and again, uniquely Ojai. Any questions at this point? You know what I think would be really neat is if they combined the older with they, the youth. They do. There they is do. a program yeah, that yeah. does that, yes. Oh, excellent. Yeah, Rocking at Old School and the, the Youth Children's Chorus. Children's Choir. They yeah. do? Yeah. Oh, excellent. And there was a performance that was sold out at Oh Yes. I happened to go to that performance, and um, I just snuck in because there were just no, well, you know, I needed to see it because you gave them money. So You're I just busted, said, bully, all right. <laughs> all right, the, the truth is I bullied my way in. <laughs> no Brown Act violation there. And it was absolutely one of the most delightful things I've ever seen in Ojai. The little kids standing up there doing the songs right next to the older generation doing the songs. It even featured tap dancing. It was just a delight. And I really encourage all of you to go to some of these performances. The, the youth opera that Michael mentioned, it's just unbelievable what they do. It's fantastic. Uh, Chair Addison, yes. I do have a question. I know we're in the midst of the uh, Christine Gold uh, so Arts right review, now, yes, right. and I want to go back is. to number one, uh, the update on public art. You mentioned that the language that you read is you're ho hopefully going to include that in the website. Are yeah. you thinking about updating periodically? Um, or are you? I am talking to Mark. Mark, do you want to comment on that? Because Mark is in charge of um, uh, well, public I relations, and Heather with the website too. Yes, about yeah. read updating it. Yes, we're <laughs> to yeah. Update the, the, uh, oh, the mic. I'm sorry. 
Uh, yes, we do <laughs> plan to update the website. Uh, it, it's sort of still in transition from the previous. Uh, we have to trans. Um, what's the word, Heather? Transfer. Transfer. Oh, it's a very technical term. <laughs> to transfer a lot of the old stuff from the old uh, version to the new, and, and add some new bells and whistles that we uh, right. have in mind, and, and do more updating. So yes, we are hoping to do right. more of fr freshening. Right. And and I know that the Arts Commission has worked extremely hard on on capa ordinance and improving that ordinance just mm -hmm. uh, overall very, so yes. i i think it yes. would be very appropriate to keep updating and adding yes. that new language in the website yes. so i just want to make a comment but um yes okay any other but, questions yes, yes Randy. i just have one question regarding uh, uh funding your um you know we've given the city council has given twenty thousand dollars to the cause um is there anyone in your group that does grant writing is there any other available funds out there or is it or is grant writing just difficult to do it is difficult to do especially because we're a public agency that is getting funding from a public agency and that sort of puts us low on the totem pole so to speak no <laughs> what did i say what did i say take it back i'll take it back i take it back but that that is something that that we we've talked about but we haven't really reached out to do anything about it and i confess that and that's that's a good stimulus we will well, well, I'm not sure if it's just your, if it's just an arts um, concern. It seems like grant writing in general throughout a lot of the um, commissions in the in the city. Um, maybe maybe there's a way of of uh, bringing one into city hall and mm -hmm. actually making him making him or her available to seek grants for a multitude of needs for the community. That would be terrific. Bobby Balderman, one of our absent members tonight, in fact, has a great deal of experience with grant writing, and I will by all means uh, report back to her that that's something that we should give some attention to. That's a very good, very good suggestion. I would add, too, that because of the large number of uh, a dollar figure in the requests that we've received, one of the things we've always done, and that I'm sure we'll do again on Thursday when we make our decisions, is instead of saying, okay, we're gonna fund these three requests, what we tend to do is we ask, first of all, in their grant proposal, how are they going to match these funds? What are they gonna to bring to the table? And they do. And so that's, that's really a, a critical component. So in that sense, we are already leveraging the dollars that the, count, that the council provides so that when we offer to someone who has a, let's say, a $3,000 grant request, a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred the expectation is that they will indeed go out and match that money mm -hmm. and they have already listed on their application uh, what sources they would turn to so that's that's a part of the process mm -hmm. yeah. I had a quick question Christine there was a talk uh, I remember months ago about uh, it being a challenge to keep up with updating the guide to all the public art on the website maybe even having a brochure that kind of thing to uh, be the, the uh, visitors could pick up is that within your capability still or yeah. or is that something that is a is a need that maybe we need to think it about? it is and I skipped over it I was going to say something okay. about it but um, I've been so teased about it being the Christine Golden show I don't mind really <laughs> <laughs> that's why we tease you uh, but this is this is a, a brochure put out by the city of Ventura of their municipal <coughs> art collection and um, I think I talked a little bit to Mark about this and it lists the artists and the pieces with a little tiny it's black and white and i really would like to see the public art committee when we're only a membership of three so things take time you know because we're volunteers and we can do what we can do and we can do it um, but eventually i would love to see something like this that would be available in all the hotel and motel rooms here in Ojai, as well as available here at City Hall sure. and the Visitor Center over by the library. But that takes a lot of planning and a lot of work, and we are always frying a lot of fish. So, but, but yes, this is something that is very much on my Public Art Committee chair agenda. So thank you for asking, Bill. Any other questions at this point? Okay, well, we'll turn now to the Artist Student Mentor Program. Uh, Heather Stobo is largely in charge of this. Again, we've had very interesting responses from artists when we put out the call to artists to participate in the program. 
and similarly with students applying for the program. And as you know, it's a process where we not only take the applications, but we then interview the students. Um, and the result of all this is going to be on display this coming Thursday night with a reception. Next Thursday, right? uh, next Thursday sorry, a week from Thursday. <laughs> yes, not, to, not tomorrow, no. A week <laughs> yeah. from tomorrow. Uh, before our meeting of the Art Commission, we will have a reception at 5 o'clock. And during that time, the work of this year's Artist Student Mentor uh, program will be on display. So Heather, maybe you can yeah, take us further into that. Well, with the, we just finished the program for this year. Um, we had five mentors and four students. Uh, Catherine Ann Jones, I believe they wrote a play together. Yes. That they're gonna workshop be at the opening, at the reception. Um, Susan since Mule and Amend, and Norman Clayton worked with one student to do a book with glass and, what did Norman? And well, glass and letterpress printing. Yes, and printing, yeah. And the, the two, I mean, you think, how are you going to make that work? And that's what I'm going to be fascinated to see. <laughs> um, well, we're fascinated how we're going to display it. Yeah, um, that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Vera worked with a student doing a drawing and painting. And then Smitty West worked with a student doing, I guess they're going to do a musical number. Mm -hmm. I believe guitar. And then he, but he also, Smitty also did take him into the whole production process and into the studio to show the student all of that, that process also. So it was, as you can see, a really diverse crowd. We had great applications on both the mentors and the students end. And I think it's going to be, it's a great program. We've moved it up last year. I think we'll move it up a little more again, just mm -hmm. so the stu it doesn't conflict with the students' end of the year programming and such. And I, you know, so hopefully we'll be able to. We added one mentor or one student this year. We did. So we went from three to four, and you know, hopefully the plan is. I think we're going to cap out at five. We decided. I think so. That's probably enough. And I, I need to rem remind us all that we are doing this in partnership with the Ohio Education Foundation. Uh, they are funding one of the artist student mentors, uh, and this is a way of, of connecting with them. It's you know it's, it's a shared mission, and as I think many of you know, the Ojai Education Foundation has shifted its focus uh, to supporting the arts in the schools in Ojai. So this is entirely what we're focusing on for the next couple of years, uh, and I could speak about that at length too. But it's a nice crossover. It's a nice blend. Uh, between what we are doing here with the Art Commission with this particular program and then the way the uh, Education Foundation is similarly focusing on the arts in the schools. Um, the diversity is as important as anything and again the fact that we can reach out to the community of artists and have someone as talented and committed to his art as Smitty West be willing to devote time to work with this student and, as Heather said, introduce him not only to all of the practicalities of becoming a musician in contemporary culture, but also to stimulate him artistically. And similarly, for this young woman from Nordoff to work in glass with Susan Amen, and she'd never worked in glass before, and then to work in letterpress printing with a, a master book artist like Norman, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a staggering and eye-opening experience for the students and the artist mentors love it as well. They really do. They really come to think, this is my student and boy am I proud. And they have a great experience together. Questions? Yes, Betsy. You know, there's a lot of excellent woodworkers in town. Have you ever approached any of them about being mentors? We did have form? one apply this past time around, as a matter of fact. Good. Uh, and that's always the tough choice. We had, I think, three times as many artists apply as we could engage in the program this year. And that's, that has been the case almost every year. But we do consciously work to make sure that we're not just having you know, four, four or five painters in a given summer. We, re we really want to get as many diverse art forms, art media, at play each year as we possibly can, both to keep it interesting, but also to, to reach out and, and connect with more students. You, remember, you may remember that the previous year, we had one young woman who 
uh, had done a considerable amount of sewing herself, and Kyle Crowner was one of the mentors, and she's a you know, a master quilt maker who's exhibited everywhere, and she worked with this young woman for the summer. They went down to the Fashion Institute in L.A., mm -hmm. and the way the artists reach out and take these kids into places they would never have access to is as rich as any part of, of this particular program. Okay. Um, Questions, you might want to mention that the reception at five o'clock is open to the public and yes, yeah. for those watching on the on the video screen, uh, that reception is public here in the city hall, and I think go ahead and state the date for the public. Uh, that is a w that's February ninth, uh, not November, November nineteenth, Thursday, a week from tomorrow, five at five o'clock, and Heather mentioned the the play that uh, the student has written. Uh, Catherine Ann Jones, of course, is herself an accomplished and produced playwright. And the play is not only going to be performed, but Catherine reached out and she found professional actors, some from L.A., in fact, <laughs> to come up and be the readers for that play. Right here in City Hall a week from tomorrow. So The performance... Uh, a week from two days. Yes. A week from Thursday. Sorry, I'm. You're killing us, Mike. No, sorry. A week from Thursday. The performances will be a one-time-only thing. Yes. But then the art will be in City Gallery for, I believe, a month and a half. Yeah. Two months. Great. Okay. Uh, now we move on to an update on the museum relationship, um, and that would have been Linda Harmon, who can't be with us tonight. We've had two very productive meetings since I spoke to you last with the new director of the museum. Um, and she is entirely supportive of this program. Uh, what we did at our last meeting, in fact, was to do a walkthrough of the museum. And when I say me, I'm referring to Linda Harmon and me, uh, with the new director. And she pointed out several places that she can envision being permanently dedicated to display of art from the city collection so that as people come into the museum it would be in one of those sort of opening areas perhaps that hallway leading into the main gallery people would from the very first see examples of what the city has acquired and then in addition to that we've been talking about uh, an exhibit of the city collection and that would probably be maybe every 18 months or two years on, on an, if you will, occasional basis. The biggest complication at this point, and we're being held up by this because she's new and has to really assess resources that are available to her, both in terms of dollars to hire people, but also volunteer uh, cadre that she has a, at her disposal, is making effective use of the big climate-controlled storage room that the museum has. That's one of the major impetuses behind, behind our desire to connect with them. Currently, the city collection, which includes major work by major Ojai artists, is housed in closets and even up in the attic here in City Hall, which is you know, in, inappropriate and potentially damaging as well. Uh, whereas the museum does have a very large room back in behind the uh, the sort of alcove where there's a, a mu museum of natural history sort of display. Back in behind there is the climate controlled, temperature controlled, humidity controlled room, which has some of these rolling shelving units that they can move back and forth. So the issue now that she's confronting, uh, Wendy Barker, is really finding the time and the people who can go through all of the material that's there, and it's a motley collection, and determine which things are really of value and need to be kept as a part of the museum's collection, and which things somehow or other ended up there and can and should be deaccessioned. Once that is done, then we will be able to sort out our relationship in terms of that storage space, and we'll move forward from there. So that's where we are on that project. Um, and I think that takes us to your report, Mark, on our proposal for a book series. Uh, this is um, 
an idea the commission is looking uh, at. It's, it's exploratory, but we're trying to figure out, it, this would be another kind of public art. It's public art, it's the architecture of Ojai. Um, it's not publicly owned, it's not publicly funded, but it's, it consists of buildings, and it consists of an enormous treasure trove of art in that regard. Uh, some of it we all know about, the Libby House by uh, Hunt and Gray, the Pratt House, Green and Green, uh, of course, the, uh, the downtown stuff by Requa. But there's stuff that, that people don't necessarily know about, and you can't just go look at it. And we know there's a great interest because every year there's a holiday home look-in tour, and the museum now every year does a um, feast on history, and people just love to go look at houses that are not only historic, but even maybe plausibly historic. They just love to go look at great, interesting houses. And this valley is, is rife with them. And, but other than things like that, you can't just walk up to privately owned places. They're mostly houses we're talking about. There are public buildings as well. But you can't just go tour them. But So we're looking at, into the possibility of creating a high quality, museum quality, um, coffee table type book, The Architecture of Ojai, that would display this art, this trove of public art in our valley in a form that anybody could, could ac access. And if, I don't know if any of you saw the um, Ojai Studio Artist's 30th anniversary book from a couple of years ago. I was involved in that. So it's about 80 pages long, high quality art production. That was paperback. It all depends. It's exploratory. We're, we're, we're trying to figure out what we could do, what it would cost, how we might be able to proceed from there. And the first thing we're doing, we consulted uh, uh, Craig Walker. We all know Craig from the Historic Preservation Commission. And he had, he's a, an Ojai architecture history expert. He and David Mason formed that club. And we're talking to David as well. And we came up with a, uh, a list of 25 architects and examples uh, which we are, uh, I'll be sending around to uh, local architects and designers to try to get them to pick their favorites to get a consensus. So we are uh, pretty much uh, semi-officially on, uh, on beam with which, which are the really important buildings. We couldn't f focus, we couldn't feature them all, it would be too expensive. Which is the most important, which ones are we missing so they could, they could add things. Um, and that'll be, uh, when we get that, we'll know what we, we'll, we start to get our arms around the size of the project and we can start to figure out what it would cost and of course then can it be, can it be done? We'd have to eventually have an editor, a designer, a photographer. I mean, you know, this is not a uh, uh, light undertaking. But just to indulge me for a second, I mean, some of the things that, that they're, they're out there that, that people can't access or don't realize. I mean, the Thatcher School Administration Building from 1911, the old uh, mission-style building, it's kind of yellowy. Uh, that was built, it's the oldest um, mission revival-style building in Ojai, predating the arcade and so forth. It was designed by Arthur Benton, who designed the Mission Inn in Riverside, which I believe is considered the first mission revival-style building. So that's sitting right over there in Thatcher. Uh, the, um, the original Presbyterian Church, which is now Byron Cady's office, was designed by J. Cleveland Cady, who was an extremely well-known designer of churches uh, in the 19th century. I think it was an off-the-shelf design. Nonetheless, it's significant. The current Presbyterian Church was designed by Carlton Winslow, who pretty much invented Spanish colonial revival style for the San Diego um, World's Fair of 1914-15. Uh, then there's, and these things, some of those, of course, the church is right there for you to see. But then there's, for example, the Moore House, Richard Neutra, extraordinarily uh, well-known, well-regarded, mid-century modern type artist. He's, there's two houses by him in Ojai. The, the particularly famous one is called the Moore House. Well, it's a private home. You can't go see it. The people who currently own it are private. There's a, you go out, there's a, a driveway and a big old fence. It's, it's there somewhere. You can look at the roof on Google Earth. doesn't tell you much. Let's, we can get, we, there are, uh, it was in House Beautiful in 1948. We can get that art and put it in the book. That's an Ojai treasure. It's not accessible. We can make it accessible. And, and, and on and on, things you don't even know about. The guy that designed um, Villanova, A.C. Martin. I, I forget all the things he designed in L.A. One of them, I think, was the May Company on the Miracle Mile, which is they preserve it because it's a significant. They don't know what to do with it, but they keep preserving it. <laughs> we'll make it a museum something. He designed Villanova. Uh, the um, Miramonte School, is it, no wait, is it Oaks? 
the Miners Oaks School. Yes, my, a guy named Maynard Linden designed Miners Oaks Elementary. Who cares? Well, he designed it in a way that became a template for elementary schools that tens of millions of baby boomers went to. Because they call it like the Ojai Weave or something. I don't know. Architecture, people who design schools know this. The average person doesn't. We can tell them. It's also beautiful. Yeah, you photograph it right. I mean, you know, these are all, these are all works of art as well as uh, practical things, inside and out. Um, just, just one more, maybe. Um, uh, Julia Morgan designed Hearst Castle. She's, she designed the Pierpont Gin House, or Gin. Of course, we have Wallace Neff. We have uh, George Washington Smith. We have Paul Revere Williams. I mean, we know these names, but there are some names. And we have local people, Austin Pierpont. You know, as we weave in purely Ojai history, um, uh, John Royne did, you know, the, uh, the Taj Mahal on, on uh, Avenida de la Vareda, for supposedly built for a Krishnamurti, but he wouldn't take it or something like that. I mean, so there's interesting history. We're not talking about just pictures. It'd be a little bit of an explanation. Um, Rodney Walker, Craig's father, Selma Wilson, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all kinds of wonderful stuff. It's art. It's in Ojai. It's extraordinary. If we could figure out a way to do it, and the cost will be significant, or we'll find out, we'd like to try. So we're exploring that. And uh, we're going to take this list and go from there and see what people think. And we have, in fact, talked about trying to find sponsors for this. And certainly, grant applications for this would And we're hoping the Board of Realtors might, might get behind it, although we don't know. Well, we don't know. But in fact, I mean, that points to the fact that what we're doing, again, is something that not only enhances life for the citizens of Ojai, who would have this resource that they could turn to, to you know, wow their visitors or just to relish themselves. But it's also something that could be on display in motels and hotels, in restaurants, in bookstores, and becomes yet, yet, yet one more thing that will cause people to say, let's spend a weekend in Ojai. And we were up in Ojai last weekend, we got this great book, Did You Know About the Architecture in Ojai? And in that sense, it really is, I think, representative of the the dual thrust, I think, of what we do. That is to say, to do everything we can to enhance life for people in Ojai who live here, but also for people who visit. So that people come to know that Ojai is indeed special. And that is where we stand. The book project is the most far-reaching. Um, our hope is that we will make this happen and that it will be the first of a series because there are obviously other subject as well, subjects as well uh, that could represent various other aspects of the arts in Ojai. I just Question. wanted to make a, a couple comments. Yeah. First of all, I think that's a really exciting project and I love the, the valley-wide scope. I think that's, that's really good. And I like the valley-wide scope of a lot of your programs, you know, um, in, the, in the connection with the Ojai Educational Foundation uh, especially. Couple comments, and then I'll kind of a bit of a challenge. Uh, number one, you talking about people getting to know about Ojai? Who doesn't at this yeah, point? I, I mean, I, I I had a dealing with a person at oil and gas in the swamps in, in uh, South Louisiana. I was on the cell phone with, and I said, "Where do you live?" I said, "I live." Oh, I love going to Ojai whenever I can. Yeah, it's okay. amazing. <laughs> who doesn't know? Fact, it? yeah. it's, it's rare that I run into people who don't have not heard of Ojai. It's amazing. Um, on the uh, uh, deaccessioning, please let us know as early as possible if the deaccessioning capacity, the, uh, the capacity opened up by deaccessioning may not be adequate. Oh, by all means. So we can yeah. address that uh, as, as a need to try to think about our suggestions. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, we need, no, we, we need to be committed to taking care of this art properly. Absolutely. And if this doesn't work, we need to think of another yeah. way. And one of the things we did talk about, as a matter of fact, in our walkthrough yeah. was that it's clear that there could be at least one more and maybe two more of those rolling walls. Right. And so that, you know, that, that would be an expense. That, that but we, this is museum, a municipal so. museum. Yeah, exactly. So, you exactly. know, let's look at it that yeah, way. Yeah, we certainly will. Okay. And the, my little bit of a challenge is that I have been paying very close attention to the 7-Eleven committee that's been appointed by the school system. And they are very pointedly not just looking about at, at closing, but also repurposing. You know, what, what can we do here? Yes. Okay. And I've gone to a couple of meetings, and one thing that's become very crystal clear is 
how each, they're only talking about elementary schools, but each elementary school has its own identity, its own integration with its community. Yep. Uh, it, I'm very, I'm heartened by the fact that they are looking at beyond just, well, which ones do we close because of lower enrollment? I think they are so open to ideas that could come from the arts community, for example, mm -hmm. about how we can look at all of this excess capacity that many school systems would die for in order to run, to be able to have visual and performing arts programs mm -hmm. that we may have an opportunity to do with our, our, our capacity with our arts community, our arts resources, put Ojai Unified School District on the map in terms of arts programs as a possibility. Same thing possibly with parks and recreation as well. But I think it now is the time to think about valley-wide ways that we can um, help the school system think about uh, making their schools uh, it really uh, even more vibrant parts of their uh, smaller communities. Well, I'm, I'm heartened to hear you say that because although Chaparral is not the world's greatest auditorium by any manner of means because it has a flat floor and has all sorts of problems, there is a complex of buildings there that I could well imagine if the school district were to make a move this bold, that could be turned into an arts complex. There are rooms there that could be studios, there are rooms that could be galleries, there could be small performance spaces. So yeah, I, I connect with it's that idea. It's time to idea. articulate those visions. I certainly and, uh, would. And, and look at ways in which the city can, can, to some degree, because we are involved in valley-wide programs, even though you know, it's, we are involved in influencing and benefiting the valley beyond our city limits, clearly. Mm -hmm. It's something just, to think about. Just quickly interject, uh, Roy Wilson designed Chaparral Auditorium and the old Ojai Elementary, and he's on our list. Good. <laughs> Good. All right, that's a connection. And you also might want to read the wonderful article, and I believe it was written by you, Mark, in the um, Ojai Quarterly about the plan, which one, yeah, exactly, oh, about the but about some of the yeah. plans that are afoot for the, um, for that whole complex that you, is that not true that you wrote a? It is true that I wrote it, uh, I don't know, there's no formal proposals that have come forward that I know of, but there are informal people thinking and yeah, talking informal. and to uh, council, uh, Councilman Weirich's point, and that was, someone wrote that in the, somewhere, I wonder who that was, yeah, this is a good time ahead of yeah. the curve before things right. mm -hmm. happen for other reasons to to make uh, to look at what's out there what can be done with it people are people are amusing and i just want to also mention that our chair over here uh, michael addison is also the chair for the ohio education foundation so this is a wonderful marriage and opportunity because that organization i think would really get behind and you know as a former art teacher to do something about what has been a decimation of art programs would be fantastic. And research has demonstrated that the most cost-effective way of raising academic performance, one of the most cost-effective ways, is involving young children in arts. And it's in just fact, not a matter of question. It's right. demonstrated. Right. And the articles in the LA Times over the past week or so demonstrate that in LA, the high-performing schools are the small number that have integrated art programs on the elementary school level. And those are the schools that have the highest performance ratings in terms of all of the testing and all the measures. So in that respect, Ojai is certainly moving in the right direction. And I think that's yeah. what we have a to offer. Any other comments yet? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mayor Lara, you and I visited a school um, that art. was for, for the challenge students. Mm -hmm. And you can't believe the gallery that they have there and the amount of artwork that the children are doing. And in, in, some, in ca some cases, young adults. They're not all yeah. children. Uh, and I don't know if you've been over to see it <laughs> no, or not, no. but you really should. I will. It is, uh, and they're more than welcome to give you a tour. We can get the contact information from you. But they actually have a studio there uh, and a gallery. Great. And it's, it is very interesting mm -hmm. that the the type of art that some of the uh, participants in that school actually do is fabulous absolutely fabulous it was amazing yeah, yeah. i agree uh any other comments no with that i am going to adjourn and i want to uh, thank the arts commission for 
uh, being so diligent and and uh, doing so much for the city and we know that you guys are volunteers so we appreciate all the time that you uh, dedicate to the city thank you guys we enjoy it thank you.